associates in the health litigation team in Manchester. These have been extremely challenging times for everyone, but there is light at the end of the tunnel with the COVID-19 vaccination rollout now well underway. I'm pleased to state that NHS Resolution has recently provided reassurance to healthcare professionals and others working and volunteering in the NHS in England about the indemnity arrangements in place. It's been confirmed that COVID-19 vaccination activity undertaken in NHS trusts, general practice and community pharmacy will be covered by the state indemnity schemes. These indemnity arrangements include any additional staff who are brought in to support delivery of the vaccination programme by trusts, GPs and community pharmacies. It will apply in any setting used to deliver the vaccination programme, including vaccinations in care homes and domiciliary settings. There are some exceptions to coverage under the state indemnity schemes. And one example includes where volunteers are deployed through arrangements established centrally by NHS England with St John's Ambulance. It's the intention of St John's Ambulance for these individuals to be covered by their own existing insurance policies. In addition to these arrangements, healthcare professionals will also be covered by Regulation 345 of the Human Medicine Regulations. This provides immunity from civil liability in respect of claims in relation to the safety of the vaccine itself. Ultimately, NHS Resolution are keen to stress that they are supporting all members involved in the vaccination rollout to ensure that it can be progressed as efficiently as possible. Hi, my name is Ruth Griffiths and I'm a legal director in the healthcare commercial team at Hill Dickinson. I wanted to highlight for you today an increase that we're seeing in the number of PCNs considering a PCN limited or corporate vehicle as their model of choice for the delivery of their PCN activities. As you know, PCNs are not by default legal entities and most PCNs have utilised either the flat or shared model, the lead practice model or a hosted model for the delivery of their PCN activities to date. But triggers such as the desire for more independence, to take back control and to manage the significant year on year increase in the amount of funding and staff to be recruited against the PCN DES is driving more and more PCNs to consider the PCN limited model as a viable option for them. Some key benefits include limited liability, the ability to be able to employ staff directly without the need for a lead practice. And finally, the ability to be able to now offer them the NHS pension, which has been clarified such that regardless of the fact that PCN Limited does not hold a core contract in its own right, staff recruited through such a vehicle can access the NHS pension, provided that their services are related to the delivery of PCN activities. If you would like to talk to me in any more detail around the PCN Limited model, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you. I'm Juliet Fish and I'm a legal director at Hill Dickinson. I'm here today to talk to you about the short term use and occupation of premises. We've seen a marked increase over the last few months in use of premises in this way. And you will have seen in the press, I'm sure, examples of organisations that have made premises available for uses that they've not previously been used for and where they are underutilised. Good examples include local authority space and premises in the hospitality sector. Storage lends itself well to this use and more recently we've seen vaccination hubs being created. It's important to set out at the outset of these arrangements the parties' responsibilities and obligations. There's then clear understanding of the basis on which the premises can be used and the basis on which they will be handed back. It's also important to ensure that necessary consents are in place to ensure that there are no issues with use and also to make sure that any works that will be carried out will be documented and reinstated as appropriate. We believe that we will, we will continue to see a use of premises in this flexible way and that premises will be repurposed over the months to come. If you require any further information or advice, then please do get in touch.